Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous where last time we uh, came here to the dry crossroad with our boy Greybo Greybor or yeah that that guy Greybor and um, he uh, set up an ambush for us with his uh, assassins guild that he joined back in Illusion Era but it was all just a, a, a ploy to lure out, I forget her name, but one of Baphomet's daughters. It's her right there on the ground. Uh, and then we killed her and all, and also Yaz. So that Assassin's Guild is now, as far as we know, uh, leaderless. So potentially it's going to be done, done for now. It was a difficult fight. Um, as you can see, our health is low. They were very strong for two people to take care of, especially uh, a tank and a squishy DPS. But, um... We did manage to do it, so I'm, I'm happy about that. He did lose a negative level, although it's not permanent. At least not yet. We might be able to do this for him. That got rid of one of them. There we go. This doesn't get rid of that, right? No. Okay. I think we do have something that does get rid of ability drain, but... I don't feel like looking for it right now. It's, it's not a big deal. But now... Now... Our plan, our plan is to head back to Dresden, and then we'll be headed towards the uh, Dragon Burial Ground. So I want to see what's going on there. Uh, we also have, I don't know if we have, do we have anything on the com ca campaign map to be doing right now? Uh, no. Looks like we did we did do stuff, and we're ready to. Do we want to teleport? So we don't have anywhere to teleport out this direction, right? We should really probably build like a teleporter here or something. In fact, let's do that. We need another teleporter out to the. Uh... Actually, no, we're not going to build one here. Although, can we build anything here? We could actually build stuff here. How are we doing on supplies? We got plenty of supplies. Let's go ahead and build some stuff here. Plus 10 energy for all generals. Let's get that. We don't want it next to any of those things. Maybe right here. And then all trainable units in adjoining buildings. So plus 10 bonus HP. I think I'd like to give that to the barracks right here. Spellcaster's Lodge. That's probably important. Let's go ahead and put that... Well, hold on. Before we do that... Uh, let's see. Just seeing... We actually probably want a shelter out this way. Build a shelter. Plus 10 bonus damage. Okay, we'll put that there. And then the last thing is... What do we need for this? Uh, we need more material points. Let's go ahead and buy some material points. Um, how many can we buy? 27,000. Let's just buy a good... Yeah, that'll be fine. And then put Spellcaster Lodge right there. Good. Alright, so we got that going. We can't teleport over here, but we'll be able to sleep. I want, if we're going to build a teleporter out, the teleporter out this way, uh, I would rather build it... Probably not there. It's a little too far north. Probably at this place right here. Or this one. Somewhere further out this way. That's my thinking. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and teleport to Dresden. We're going to go inside. We're going to go to sleep. What is this? The price of... Oh, yeah. He wants to have a drink with us. Let's go do that. I don't know. May maybe maybe we can convince him to... I don't know, Go back to his family or something. Give his family another ch chance or change his profession. Anything other than be who he has been. Although, I guess if he ever changed who he had been, he might not have... You know. He might have actually killed me.
Okay. Let's go ahead and... You don't have anything to say, do you? Nope. Although we could sell to you, right? I haven't actually looked at what you have to sell in a long time. Goggles of Malich... Mal... Malokio? Mo... Malak... Malakchio? Uh, these goggles grant the wearer plus 10 combat as well as on perception. Whenever the wearer confirms a critical hit with any bow, the target becomes disoriented for 1d4 rounds, suffering a minus 4 penalty to initiative checks, attack rolls, athletics, and perception checks. Well, that's kind of good. It sounds like it's kind of good. Anything else I'd want to get from you? Uh, I'll sell you that. Get all this stuff. Let's buy more of these. Got some potions. Alright, that's nothing I really want. Um, you can have all of these things. One day I'll go through all this stuff. I was gonna do that off off camera, but I kind of forgot. So, I'll have to do that another time. Damn, we have so much crap. Don't need a plus three resistance. Deal. Uh, you know what? We'll, we'll take the, we'll take these two. Give me that. I think that'd be good for Lan or, uh, Arushale. I think Arushale has goggles already. Or glasses. Is that the commander who entered the lair of assassins unafraid, wreaking havoc and personally murdering everyone in sight? Why, yes, I think it is him. Well, beer is on me today, just like I promised. Greyboar greets you loudly, puffing on his pipe as usual. He seems much more cheerful than usual. Can I expect more attempts on my life? Of course, but... He no longer has weapons like Horsala's Assassin's Guild at his command. And the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth are no match for them. I don't think you need to be wary of any more attacks. Have you ever been tempted to betray me? <laughs> well, maybe a little, perhaps. But I never violate the terms of my contracts. Justice, villainy, loyalty, treachery... All these words carry no meaning for me anymore, but my reputation. For that, I will put my life on the line. You can say whatever you want, but you, you have a faithful and noble heart. I don't know about faithful and noble, <laughs> but uh, sure. You have proven that you always keep your word. Again? Well, I guess I don't know how marriage works. In Pathfinder, right? I haven't seen the vows, but that also is not necessarily true. Your fixation on this whole reputation business is utterly crazy, but today I couldn't be happier that you've lost your marbles. That one's actually something I could see Baird saying. I'm not sure that I would have done the same if I were in your place. Hmm. I'm glad you made the decision that you did. Oh yeah, that's obvious. Would Barrett have made the same decision? Probably. He, I mean, I guess Barrett would, would never be in that position. He would have to be a completely different person to ever be in that position, I feel like. I don't really feel like picking five. I feel like that's kind of a bland answer. Or response. Five or three would be... Like, I think worrying about your reputation is important. But I do think Greybore takes it a little too far at times. Ah. Uh, we're going to go with three. It's a chaotic choice, but... I mean, I guess two is all right if we're talking about him professionally. Three. Being true to my word is one of the few virtues that I hold in mm. high regard. I don't carry it around in my pack during my countless travels. 
but it's always with me. I don't. I don't. That's not really what I meant to say. Meant, buddy. <laughs> uh, thank you for remaining loyal to me, nonetheless. It's not about loyalty. It's just business, and. <sighs> but perhaps you are right about that. I like you. I rarely say that to people, and almost never to my employers. But here we are. The dwarf cuts off abruptly and goes silent for a while. He puffs on his pipe, lost in thought. Finally, he speaks. I enjoy traveling with you, and I would have felt regret if you had died. Apparently, our adventures together have made me overly sentimental. Have you ever thought about what you're going to do when this war is over? They say that the Assassin's Guild of Illusionera, of which I pride myself of being a member, has recently lost its leader. I, on the other hand, have been honing my demon-slaying skills to perfection over the past few months. When this whole thing with the world wound is over, I'll return there and try to become one of the aristocrats of Illusionera. That is what they call themselves, if I remember correctly. I'm not sure I like that plan, Greybor. I will reside there in luxury. Bathe in the gossip about my notorious misdeeds and take assignments from the Crusaders at a hefty discount. If the demons are trying to occupy our Galarian, why shouldn't we mortals repay them by occupying a part of their realm? Guess it's a good thing I'm not an Aeon anymore, huh? Just know that I think highly of you. Nope, I do not. I, 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 I think highly of your skills. Have you ever thought about quitting the assassination business? Yeah. Now, quite the opposite. My career is booming at present. First, I have an opportunity to work with you and participate in a truly fascinating adventure, which is going to lift my reputation to new heights. Second, I've just joined a very formidable assassin's guild. There is a lot more for me to achieve as a professional. And I will only start thinking about retirement and the peaceful life of a commoner when I'm past my prime. The dwarf looks at you in surprise. Anyway, fortune doesn't favor those who think too much about tomorrow instead of living in the present. Right now, I'm fighting the world wound under your command. As for what happens next, we'll just have to see. You have a daughter. She would want to see me again after all these years. What would she think of me if I told her how I'd been earning my bread all this time? That I left her to do this kind of work? I'm afraid to hear the answers. I only hope that she will be able to forgive me if I ever get the chance to see her again. So I know we just became a devil and we're lawful evil now and everything. But if there's a chance I can convince him to go at least... You don't have to stay with your family, but stay in touch or something, right? Like, I mean, come on, man. A after the after we win the war, I think you should retire and go find your family. Maybe you are right. Every road eventually comes to an end, and I've been treading this path for quite a long time. Fine. Let us have one more go at defeating some indomitable evil, and then I'll go into retirement. <laughs> Gwerbor smirks for a moment, but he can't hide the sadness that creeps into his into the cocky bravado of his words. I'm glad we had this talk. Yeah, he doesn't seem enthusiastic about doing it. Like it's it kind of sounds like I'm punishing him or something. But uh, whatever. I'm glad we had this talk. You know, Commander. You know. I've always thought that I was a loner by nature. I don't like people. I don't give a damn about them. They don't give a damn about me. And that's how it's always been since I met you. But you are an exception to all the rules. It is completely wrong for a hired blade to have any kind of personal affection for a client. But I do. 
Whatever lies ahead, I will never regret going on that dragon hunting mission with you. Thanks, Grey Boar. I appreciate that. Surprised to hear such words from an assassin, Commander. Greyboar's face is bright red. He smooths down his beard, takes a long draw from his pipe, and gives a deep sigh as he exhales a thick cloud of smoke. Finally, he regains his composure and continues on in a more normal tone. I have nothing else to say. In that case, let this story become a good memory of how we cheated death itself. That was a good conversation. I'm glad... I'm glad we were at least able to tell him to go to his family. Whether or not he actually does it, I guess we'll find out in the epilogue, but... I know I know, not everybody is, you know, cut out to be a family person, and, you know, that's who he is, and he made a mistake starting a family, and, and you know, he was unhappy there and all that fine you can you can you can separate from your family and do what makes you happy but i still think you know you you owe it to them to at least stay in touch to some degree i mean i don't know i don't know maybe i'm just thinking it of it it's too much of like a, a real world real world modern sort of thing instead of a fantasy medieval world i don't know glad we were able to do that though also, we were not very happy with his idea of going and living in a Lushanira, <laughs> to be honest. I know he was going to, you know, give Crusaders a discount, but that's not saying he's not going to be working for demons, too. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and rest. Also, I mean, I feel like it's always a good time to retire when you're at the top. And I feel like closing the world wound is going to be when you're at top. Uh, we can't make any cream soup with snout, so let's go ahead and change this to something we can make. Maybe some cheese crostata, or crostata, rather. Uh, we can travel six hours longer. Let's go ahead and eat that. That's probably a good uh, thing to eat here in Dresden. Grey boar, it seems to me that in the first crusade, there, were, there was more space for paladins and less for hired killers. However... There is a limited supply of do-gooders and fighters of con of conscien conscious, and that supply is used up quickly. Faith, hope, and love are what hold the world together, Greyboar. The only people who talk about the power of money are those who have no faith, no hope, and no love. I know from my own experience. Oh, hello. Tenna, scenery master. Ah, commander. Good day to you and all that. I'm Tenna from the next door theater. Remember me? So, here's the score. We finally f we finished rehearsing and we are ready to stage the world premiere of our play about your exploits. Grandma sent me to invite you. We're ready to get started. So, will you come? Uh, I'm not going to watch your show. Let's leave now. We're finally, we're finally uh, going to see the climax of all their hard work over the past year. Grandma Gretlin, the director. Grandma Gretlin's smile shines with pride and happiness. Her new ladle shines equally bright, and she holds it like a scepter. Ladies and gentlemen, the day has come that every participant in the crusade has waited with bated breath. The day when we, the Next Door Theater, finally present to you our newest production. Theater, theater! Ember laughs melodi melodiously, uh, melodiously, and claps her hands. Greyboard casts a long, thoughtful look at Ember. The elf's joy reflected on the dwarf's stern face by a slight smile. The massive prop catapult behind Grandma creaks loudly and somewhat ominously in time with her words. At least you hope it's a prop. Today we return to the recent past, to one of the first victories won by the commander. Our show is dedicated to, the, to these grandiose, incredible, mind-blowing, exciting, large-scale, grand, and legendary events many of you probably witnessed firsthand. As the director and playwright, I feel humbled and honored to, captivated by her own speech, Grandma brandishes her ladle with wild enthusiasm and accidentally touches, but only lightly, 
One of the catapult's levers. Whoops. What happened to that guy? <laughs> you hear a theatrical loud whisper from the ranks of the actors. Does anyone remember what we used to load that catapult? What we used to load that catapult? Tenna Scenery Master, I have a better question. What did the projectile hit? I see something that resembles a plume of smoke. And this in the place similar to the one where we left the crates our props are in. I... I... I put my cherry pie in the catapult bucket, bucket <laughs> to have a secret snack during the performance, and now it flew away. The last sentence is followed by a loud sob. Stop panicking, says uh, Grandma Gretlin. The show must go on, even if we are left without our costumes and props. If something does not go according to plan, improvise. Having whispered these instructions quite loudly to her crew, Grandma Gretlin gives a beaming smile to the audience. Nothing more than a few fireworks to celebrate our premiere. And now we shall begin. Hurrah for the premiere! You may start, but if anything goes wrong, <laughs> I'll throw a rotten tomato at you. I don't want to watch this farce. Hurrah for the premiere! In the year 4715, in the area near Dresden, a figure appears in front of the army awaiting his orders. It is the leader, Knight Commander Barad. Grandma Gretlin, the director. It doesn't take too much t too much attention to recognize the awkward figure of Rubbledum, the gnome standing on the shoulders of his twin brother, Herophant. Finally, the day has come. Rubbled Rubbledum winces and mumbles, making no effort to be discreet. Harry, stop moving. I'm going to fall. One second. I forgot to mute my Discord. Give me one moment, there we go. Okay, good. Now back to the show. You won't fall, comes a voice from the middle of the commander's torso. I've covered my shoulder pads with a strong magic glue, so your boots should be securely attached. Go on with your speech. I will never get to the exciting part. Mine. You put glue on, what? Brother, we were supposed to change places during the performance, but how can I climb off your shoulders now? Not a problem whatsoever. You take your, you take off your boots. I tuck off my shoulder pads. And then we switch. Voila. Well, <laughs> only, well, I can't take off my boots. My laces keep kept coming untied, so I fix them with some, with the same glue. You know, just to be careful. Now you'll need a hacksaw in about an hour to get these boots off of me. And we're in trouble. And we're in the middle of the show. I've only learned half the lines of this part. What are we gonna do? Rebel Dumb, improvise. Invent something for, for the half of the part of Herophant was supposed to play. You can play your part without switching places. Everyone knows the commander. And by the commander, I of course mean me, is a gifted ventriloquist. <laughs> no one will be surprised if the voice of the play's main character sometimes comes from his belly. <laughs> improvise. Easy. Uh, easy. I've always dreamed of becoming a playwright. Next up is the commander's inspiring speech before his army. The gnome thinks for a moment. My fellow crusaders, listen carefully, for I'll give you a few tactical tips. Tip number one, get a running start so that you can jump really high. Tip number two, if you jump really high, you will be able to ride any demon flying over you. Tip, tip number three, if you can't ride a demon, it means there are no flying demons above you, and that means they have already been defeated. Well, either that, or you were trying to jump indoors and hit your head on the ceiling. You're the one talking nonsense, and yet somehow, I'm the one who feels ashamed. We're twins, dummy. Our reputation is shared because when one of us talks nonsense, observers can't tell which one of us is doing it, so they blame both of us. Grandma Gretland, the director. Then, with his army properly inspired, the commander explained the details of his grand strategic plan. As we all know, the commander planned to disperse the enemy's legions by charging, charging them on the back of a huge, formidable mountain goat. Oh, of course. Grandma pauses and glances askance, askance, at the quiet, quite ordinary pony standing near the edge of the stage. A huge but miniature mountain goat of a rare pony-like breed. Uh, Makia. Are we completely sure Pretzel is up to the task? I haven't been to any of his rehearsals, but he definitely doesn't look like he's ready to ride down a demonic legion. Not to worry, says Tina. Our esteemed sound master is backstage and will lure Pretzel with a carrot. 
Our pony can move as fast as a hurricane for a carrot. He would charge a Balor if any Balor were foolish enough to stand between Pretzel and his carrot. There he goes. It seems to me that something has gone wrong, Maki says. Do you know how many ponies I had to audition for this role? An entire herd. This was the only one that was any good. He did his tricks, his trick perfectly during the rehearsal. I don't know why he's decided to dig in his heels now. Oh, Pretzel, how you've let me down. Grandma. And now that all of you have witnessed the most spectacular, dramatic, and impressive culmination of our play, let us return to reality for a moment. A welcome to welcome the person whom we are gathered here to celebrate, the Commander. After all, this is one of the, his earliest adventurers. Adventures. So, what do you say, Commander? Did you like our show? Um, <laughs> I had so much fun. Not bad, but there's room for improvement. I've never seen a worse farce in my life. Uh, not bad, but there's room for improvement. Of course, sure. A mysterious smile appears on Grandma Gretlin's face. Believe it or not, Commander, but every true comedian knows their calling is to provoke laughter and smiles, not necessarily on stage. And it's not and it need not be a successful, professional, and perfectly organized performance. Sometimes our art exceeds the limitations of the stage. And now, unfortunately, the time has come to say goodbye. We were with you almost from the first day, but now the show is over. And the next door theater troupe has other places to be and other plays to perform. Okay. Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> I have to say, it took them a year to make that play, I guess. I guess, you know, it might have been ready for a while. They were just waiting for me to come back. Are they actually gone? Yeah, they're not here anymore. Hmm. I never thought I'd think of the, a devil, but if not for that contract of yours, I'd be a warm, warm food. Now I feel like I can fight the demons on equal terms. Make sure to tell your friends about me. They won't regret it. You'll see. Interesting. Okay. So to go and fight a dragon, who do we want to take with us? Let's take... Sila. Mmm, Trevor. I think I'm going to take Saucil. I'm going to level him up since we can't find the uh, the Pathfinder dude. I want to take Lan because I want to give him the goggles. And Nenio because it's, you know, research and archaeology and stuff. We're going to go with this. We're not taking our greatest spellcaster, so that could be a problem. But hopefully we'll be okay with Nenio and what we have and the, the brothers. All right. Where are we going? We're going all the way up here, right? Let's go ahead and level up Saucy Hall first. Get this done. I guess we'll keep putting him in more priest. Or maybe we should just start going into cleric. I'm not really... Maybe I've not used, like, any of his war priest abilities. And I don't know if I... Should be using any of them. Um, the level 8 gets us this. Holy Lance. Although, did we already have that from... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I'm gonna put it in, in Cleric. <laughs> Putting, you know, this probably isn't ideal for poor old Saucil here, but... We're gonna do it anyway. And for this... Could get you that. Hmm. Great Cleave. Not really used his cleave attacks very much. It, we've not really done much with Saucil at all, to be honest. I feel bad about that. Because I do like Saucil. But I just haven't really found his... His... I don't know. I just haven't really found the idea role for him with me at the moment. Uh, let's get critical focus. That's always a good one. There we go. And then we're going to go into here. And yeah, you do not have goggles on, so you're going to have these. There you go, looking sharp. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and... Uh, I don't... Yeah, let's go ahead and head on out. All the way up to the Dragon Burial Ground. That's going to take one day, 12 hours. A nice long journey for us. Now, because of our food, we're going to be able to travel a lot longer. 
six hours longer than we normally would. Got some Crusader stuff to do, though. Uh, five Aranis, Ar Aranis have been recruited. Thank you very much. Uh, there are there are some things we could do. Are those going to be things we want to do? No. Hunting down mutiny and last forces. Nope. So let's go here and... Where do we want to send you guys? We got... Where are they? Have you keep going down here? I don't think these ten units are going to bump our rank up at all, but they'll be helpful nonetheless. The rank, I think we're going to go and hit this force up here. And then we got to decide where we're going to send them. This army probably looks like it might be easier, maybe? Or we could try and send them up here and start attacking in this area. Setsuna Shai. That'd be good, probably. And we got you up here. You are not strong enough to take on them. We got this level 6 army. They're going to be coming down this way. Okay. We could try to send you out to fight these guys. They're only level 8. Yeah, let's go ahead and start sending you guys out that way. See, see what you can do down there. Alright. And then we got you guys. Who I can put with... Oh, wait. We were going to do... That's what we were doing. We were going to put... Can I still do that? Recall. Can I assign? Can I do this? The army will lose all benefits provided by this general. You will not be able to assign this general to any army for three days. Hmm. You know what I think I'm going to do instead of doing that? I'm going to keep her there because I don't want to lose her for three days. But I don't want to use that general anymore. So... That means we are going to recruit a new... Oh, wait. The general's costed so much. That's why I wasn't going to do that. Hmm. All right. I'll just... I'll just assign her for this. Back to where we where we began. Put all of you guys there. There we go. And is there any recruiting to be done right now? Uh, no. We've got these guys, but we don't need to recruit any of them. Alright, that'll have to be good enough. And I don't want to send you guys anywhere, do I? I can have you guys start going down here. Maybe you guys can take out these. These armies. Hmm. That's daily income right there. We want to get those. As soon as possible. Yeah. Send you guys down there. Well, actually, we'll wait till the next recruitment drive. Alright, you keep going. Long journey. An encounter. Defeat is not an option. What do we got? Okay, we got some bad demons and some ass giants. All right, you're gonna go ahead and take him out. Good. Zenith. Um, we have tons of these, so we might as well use one of these. And hit this one. Okay, Saucio. Ooh, Saucio. That was good. I like that. Need to do that more often. 
and take him out land. Finish him off. Alright, we probably didn't need to use haste for that, but it worked out. Don't need any of that stuff. Let's get out of here. Looks like Trevor's fatigued. That might have been because of the, the rage, though. And we'll take that one. Some money. As long as uh, Saucio crits like that, he, he's got some good damage on him. Alright, that guy's moving, although it's not time for them to be moving. We'll just keep going up here. Alright, now it's time for us to continue. So. I mean, taking this demon fortress out would be really nice. It might be the last thing down here. It is skeletons, and it's level 11. That could be dangerous. What's this one do? All generals gain plus 5 bonus to power. Lasts for 2 days. Let's see if we can even get there in one day. Because we don't want to waste it if we can't even get there. Hmm. I actually can't tell if we're going to get there. Let's go back here. Uh, events? The Possessed? A scouting party got caught in a storm in the World Wound. Alas, the consequences were not were, were most dire. Corrupted spirits entered the soldiers' bodies, taking complete control. What should be done with them? End their lives, perform an exorcism, use them in battle. I mean, if we can use them in battle, that'd be great. That's chaotic. I don't really want to do that, right? Perform an exorcism. That's a good action. Deducts 3,000 finance points. Nope. In their lives. Lawful. All units get the fearless feat. So the chaotic one's probably the best one. And that's what I suggested saying. That's the first one that reached out to me. So we're going to use them in battle. That's two chaotic choices in this episode. Oh, God. The baleful sp spirits have, been ensla have enslaved the soldiers' bodies. Uh... The powerful spirits that have enslaved the soldiers' bodies will gladly charge into any battle, although it seems unlikely that they will be careful with their garments made of flesh and blood. Still, having possessed warriors, warriors will prove, prove useful in a fight. Good. So we can rank this up. We just uh, are waiting for this to be done, which is almost done. That's going to be Drake training. That's going to be fun. We can get an outpost to Bastion. Expansion. That could be nice. What does that cost again? Uh, I don't really want to spend it right now. So we're going to hold off on doing that. Okay, as for our other armies, besides this one, Army 1, you're staying up there. You can probably get to another Army 2. Okay, then we're going to use this. It's a 10-day cooldown. Damn, that was a cool effect. It, it, okay, just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like, um, a thing where I should have been able to see it on their, their little banner here. All right, good luck. This could be a tough fight. They are one strength higher than me. All right, there goes the Balor. Okay, they got fire elementals too. That's bad. Is that what they just summoned? Or I can't tell. Okay, well we need to get rid of... This person. What we can do... Hmm. He's just... I don't know if that guy's affected by fire. Can we tell? Yeah, we can. So he's not affected by fire. Neither is the giant... Oh, wow. This might have been a mistake. <laughs> so let's go ahead and use this on you. It might kill you. It does. Good. We're going to send the Hedge Knights up here to attack you. Hell Knights. Move up. Over here. Attack them. 
Everybody attack them. Yikes. Uh, you guys. Move over here. You got you. Attack him. Try and get rid of some of his health. Good. Get to go again. We have a chance of killing him here. Good. The battler is gone. Let's get rid of the giant salamander. We that doesn't do that much damage, is it? Change of change of plans. Go after this guy first. Get in there. Um. Hmm. Put this right here. Attack. That's not good. Heal him. He's gonna attack. Good damage. Two attacks. Perfect. Good. And then I'm gonna have you... Keep attacking them. We're probably going to lose them. Which is unfortunate. Heal. I'm liking that they're getting multiple attacks. That's really good for us. Yep, we lost them. But we saw that coming. Um, go ahead and heal again because you don't really have anything else to do. Good, they're almost gone. They're gone, good. So now, how far can you go? We're gonna wait. And now we can get in with both of them. Good. Then we just keep healing and we'll be fine. Hell Knights are coming in clutch here. Luckily, we're not going to lose any Hell Knights. Because of the healing tactic here. This is why I like her over, uh... What's her face? Because the healing is actually very useful. Of course, we're still going to lose some people here. But, there's not much we can do about that. Alright, this might do it. Nope, it won't. Okay, you're not going to be able to get the kill. But you would there. We don't want that, because we want to heal one more time. Make sure we don't lose any Hell Knights. There we go. Alright, we won. Let's see how bad of a loss we have. Okay, so we kept all the signifer signifers. Uh, we don't really care about the demons. I don't think they're that good. The hedge knights are a big loss. But... It's kind of expected a little bit with mercenaries that you're going to lose people. And the fact that we're not building hospitals as we go is also a problem. Having dealt with the, the creatures of fire that came to Galarian for reasons unknown... The soldiers discovered a, a strange twig amidst the, amidst the ashes, still burning with, the unho with unholy fire. This dangerous find was handed to the commander with great precaution. Fire of Baphomet. The followers of the Demon Lord... The followers of Demon Lord Baphomet commit countless crimes to earn his favor. Curious, Curious was a servant of Desna, who was in charge of the temple shelter, but secretly worshipped the Lord of Beasts. He took advantage of his position to build a cunning maze in the temple's secret basement and filled it with fierce and bloodthirsty monsters. Each night, Curious cast an overly cast an overly trusting vagabond or a homeless person into the maze where they met their grisly end. The cultists spread heresy and depravity, corrupting the other priests. Baphomet took note of his servant's guile and bestowed an incredible gift upon him. A spark of the flame gracing the brow of the Lord of Monsters himself. The lantern containing the spark could con could summon fiery denizens of the of the abyss, and its swaying could hypnotize or conjure terrifying illusions. 
Kyrius enshrined the flame of his lord and master at the very heart of his maze. But soon enough, an incredible thing happened. A lonely beggar boy, a frail and timid creature, fell into Kyrius's clutches and was cast down into the maze. Somehow, he managed to survive and reach the very center of the trap. He reached out for the flame with his scraggly hand, hands and was gone. Frightened and furious, Kyrius found the empty shrine and set out to pursue the, the pilferer. He feared that Baphomet might learn about his failure and punish his negligent servant. servant. After a while, he learned of an entire village reduced to ash by fiery creatures and the survivors that driven insane by the eerie glow of a sinister flame. They raved and rambled about a, fla a frail beggar boy with hellish fire in the palm of his hands. Curious tracked the young man down, fear tugging at his heart and nudging him towards madness. When he finally reached the boy, the beggar laughed and turned into a cocky young man, decked in the garb of, Baph of a Baphomet cultist. The grinning rogue said it was the Lord of Monsters himself who had inspired him to steal the unholy flame, and even devised the guise of the feeble child. Curious's fa failure would be his downfall, and the sneaky thief would take his place as Baphomet's mo most loyal servant. A fight broke out where both demon worshippers sought to destroy one another, but neither could gain the upper hand. When they became tired, the Lord of Beasts flames flame slipped from the thief's sweaty hand and fell onto a pile of dead branches. A fiery creature emerged from the fire and, and surrounded the weak priests, the monster's eyes glowing like embers. The cultists pleaded with, the, with their master for protection, but their appeals fell on deaf ears. Deaf ears. The spawn of Baphomet's flame feasted on the sinner's flesh all night, and when the fire burned out, only a tiny spark of the, un of the unholy flame was left smoldering upon the remains. Damn, that sucks for them. Okay, so we are now, we, we've lost some strength here. We are now only a, a rank six army. Uh, we could go intercept these guys though. That's where we're gonna head. What did we find? Polaro's Falls. Oh wow, what is this? Scouts have reported that a large demon force is on the move near a drained lake in the heart of the world wound southwest of Dresden. That's not good, is it? Okay, and let's go ahead and try and do this fight, too. We're gonna do this on him. See if that has an effect. Okay, well, they're lined up perfectly for this. So go ahead and do that. Let's see how many we kill here. It's pretty good damage. Fortunately, it didn't do the trick. Okay, so we can do this on you. Do a little bit of damage to them. Not a whole lot. Those guys are a lot of hell. That's not good. Yep, we kind of knew that was going to come. You can come up here and start attacking them. Okay. Come over here. Up here. Alright. Go with that that strike here. Good damage. Move you up here. Perfect. Ow. Oof. Okay. Think we're okay. We're still okay. Hit this group right here. Good. The archers are gone. You can get rid of this group. Oh, no. That didn't kill him. Yikes. Okay. Hmm. We're not getting the, uh... The sort of rebound thing. We need to heal them. Good. Finish them off. Okay. Let me move you here. They're gone. Heal them. And you can kill them. Oh, these guys got a lot of health. Right, they're gonna go after the rock guys, which is what we wanted. 
They don't do any damage, but... Go after them. Good. Heal them again. And... Attack. Okay, so... Oh, good. We finished them off. So we just have these guys left. Okay. We're gonna hit him with this. Good. And then we can heal. And attack. Good. Do some more damage. And... Can we kill him with this? Potentially. He has to do max damage. We're gonna do that. Okay. This will kill him. And we win. I think we're still okay. I don't think that bar is full. It was not full. Good. So we we managed to win without taking any casualties. A thousand resources and a new fort. Long ago, a necromancer settled in this remote corner of the world wound and made a deal with demons, promising to serve them in exchange for their protection. Undead guards kept watch of the of the tower of this terrifying castle and outside its walls, a tiny settlement emerged inhabited by intimidated slaves. Now their imprisonment is over. Awesome. And we level up. Guaranteed ability slow. So that'll be good. Extensive infirmary. That. We're going to get that. All units receive a minus two penalty to speed. Three to, minus three to attack. Minus five to initiative. And minus three to reflex saving throws. That's pretty good. Okay. And we now have control of... What is this place called? Necromancer's Grave Outpost. We're going to go ahead and build something here. We're going to build a hospital. So build a hospital. And it also... And it increases finance point, financial point income, finance points income by 200. If there are no buildings that provide recruitment growth in the fort, only one inn can be built in each fort. Uh, I don't think we're going to build that here. I don't know yet. I think a shelter can't be built. Unless we have the next stage, right? Our allied units within the fort's area control. Plus one bonus to attack AC. Let's buy one of those. A supply center. And I suppose we might as well build an inn here. Why not? Get some more financial points out here. Or finance points. There we go. Alright. I don't think there's anything else we want to do on the military map. Unless we want to send them out. Which we don't. So let's go here. And finally get up to the Dragon Barrel ground. We do have some fatigue set in though. So we do actually need to rest. Uh, rest, rest, rest. Right here. Do that. We don't need cheese crostata. Cr crostata. Because we're not traveling. So we could get acorn pie. Increase the DC of saving throws against all spells you cast by two per day. Screaming omelette. Plus two cooking bonus to max HP per level. And fast healing. I like that. Let's get the. Let's get that. Begin resting. Lan. Apologi apologies in advance if I make jokes about things you don't find funny. It's my way of avoiding confrontation. Sometimes I forget that it doesn't work on everyone. Trevor. Do you think I'm some delicate flower? We had a guy in our unit who was left without an arm or legs, but he survived. So we called him Lucky. Huh. It's still funny. Well... I guess so. <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever you find funny, I suppose. Okay. 
I was actually hoping we'd get through the burial ground today, but we're just getting here at the end of the episode. And in fact, we are actually going to end the episode here, guys. Uh, so yeah, this episode was mostly just crusade stuff. But uh, in the next episode, we will be doing the burial ground. So until then, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you later.